If there's one thing residents and visitors have in common in New Orleans is that everyone is hungry for the food here. And the residents here at the Audubon Zoo are no exception. Hungry animals at the many exhibits here have to be fed twice a day. And Twyla's Neil Malasong goes behind the scenes to see what it takes to feed all the critters here. Let's hope that they don't put him into one of the exhibits. People line up at the gates of the Audubon Zoo early, especially in the summer when kids are on break from school. But before those gates open, there's already a whole flock of activity inside. Caretakers make their rounds, delivering food made fresh each day. They're brought to individual locations near each animal exhibit, hidden from public view. And while it's marked for something other than human consumption, it comes from some of the same sources we do get our food from. Not only that, it starts in a kitchen. I'm here in the kitchen and I'm surrounded by all of this beautiful looking produce that no person is going to eat. This is all going to the animals here at the Audubon Zoo. Bell peppers, broccoli, bananas of course for the monkeys, they love those, as well as some, some corn and even some Louisiana products like rice here on this cast iron stove. It's just like any kitchen at your home or any restaurant and we're getting ready to produce some of that food. I've already got my glove on so let's get started. I forgot to mention Louisiana sweet potatoes are on the menu coming from a Louisiana farm not far from the Audubon Zoo. Right now it's part of a recipe for howler monkeys. Each recipe uses farm fresh produce that is scientifically formulated for every species at the zoo. The required ingredients are carefully measured and weighed before being put into a meal. The only thing left to see is how I did as a chef. Well, everyone's a critic, I guess. In my defense, I don't have the expertise of Charles Braun, who manages the animal commissary here. For primates like the howler monkeys, they need 140 pounds of food each day just for themselves. Audubon has a budget of well over half a million a year for just food alone. Uh, we handle a lot of, well, we handle pretty much everything. It comes through the commissary from produce to meat to fish, uh, all the feed and grain, hay, straw, alfalfa. Uh, it's, it's a big operation. I know we've been accused a lot of monkeying around on this show, but this is actually an orangutan. Here we are at the orangutan exhibit here, one of the many animals that gets daily food from the commissary here at the Audubon Zoo. All the produce we get is restaurant quality food. Uh, in fact, our distributor right now, Capital City, they distribute two schools and restaurants all around, well, Louisiana, they're, they're a big company. So there's no, there's no wilted lettuce or moldy tomatoes or anything like that. No, it's, it is definitely human quality. Some of that food is even native to the grounds here, such as bamboo and, of course, the grass. No matter where it comes from, as Braun said, there is always an eye kept on food quality, the same way they care for all of the many colors the animals have here at the Audubon Zoo. The zoo covers almost 60 acres of this once sugar plantation and houses more than 2,000 animals. It's actually one of the old WPA projects, and guys, another WPA project is Monkey Hill. It isn't a natural hill. There are no naturally occurring hills, and that's why they built it, to teach the kids of New Orleans, like myself, what hills were like. Yeah, you grew up here, and I know one of the traditions was you come to the Audubon Zoo, and what do you do at Monkey Hill? Roll down Monkey Hill. I did it once. like a not unlike a monkey. <laughs> so, which exhibit did they want to put you in? The orang one. The orang yeah. tan. And that's only because the orang was looking at me so well, you know. Yeah, she seemed to like you. Yeah, I think. Unless I paid good money to put you in there, just have the <laughs> pleasure to put you in there. I think that's one of the Audubon projects, actually. So you may want to, you know, spend your money, go to our website, find the Audubon Institute, and contribute to putting Neil in a monkey. <laughs> I would actually pay a lot of money for that. Thank you very much, Neil Malasong.